Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my challenge today will be to have everybody awake here, okay, after this very good lunch we had. Uh, I will talk today about management for winded sows. I'm sorry about my accent, so if somebody don't understand what I'm saying, please ask, okay? So, uh, initially, when we think about management for winded sows, we think about the winter serves interval, okay? But I would like to say in advance that it's not only the winter service interval that play a role in the management of the winded sow. We need to consider other phases of the cycle of the sow as the gestation and as the lactation playing a role in the management of the winded sows. So we can say, what is the winter service interval? Why is so important? It is the most variable component of the litter per sop year calculation. <laughs> so if the farm has a longer winter service interval, we have more non-productive days, and then we'll have less litters per sop a year. Okay? And we see a big variation between farms. We have excellent farms going from four in a day to five days of winter service interval, to farms having more than seven days okay, of winter service interval. And the, win the winter service interval is also related to the next fairing of the sow, okay? Related to the performance, the number of piglets of the next fairing of the sow. There are different factors that play a role in the length of that. Uh, I would say the most important would be around the feeding, but not only feeding in the winter service interval, as the feeding in the gestation, feeding lactation, also, the boar exposure play a big role on that, and we have other factors as the water availability, the health of the herd, and others, okay? So, let's start about feeding during gestation, okay? And what that would be, basically, a good body condition management, okay? We would not like to have over-conditioned cells or fat cells in our herd, as they have a higher cost of production, they want to produce milk very well at lactation. And thinking about the winter service interval, those, uh, those fat cells, they won't eat very well in lactation. Usually, they, they, will have, uh, they can have a higher uh, body condition loss at lactation and then having a longer winter service interval. Sorry, and we should start that since the breeding uh, of the goods. So we should breed the goods in the right weight. Okay. One thing that I think is important to, to talk about is how the farm is measuring this weight. Okay. We ideally we would like to have a scale to do that, but there are farms that d doesn't have a scale at the farm. So we should think about alternative tools to have that as the guild tape to have an idea of the guilt at breeding. It is important also to control the body weight gain in gestation of the guilt that will help the farm the body condition man management in the future. If possible, uh, put all the guilt together in the snake at the stalls so the farm can have a special attention to them. And try to group the bread cells by body condition. So put thin cells close to thin cells and fat cells close to fat cells if possible. Sometimes if we pay attention to the cells eating, uh, we can see a bossy cell, a fat cell eating some feed of a thin cell close to her. So that's why it would be important if possible to place them uh, close to each other. It's very important to have an evaluation of the body condition at breeding, at 30 days of gestation, 6th day of gestation, and 9th day of gestation. We would like to have more than 90% of the cells in a good body condition after week 4. And here I put consistency in the body condition evaluation. It's important that the people of the farm is in, is in the same page about the evaluation of the body condition. Sometimes we can see one person have uh, thinking that one sow is fat, but the other person thinks the same sow is not in a good body condition. So it's very important to have a training with the people of the farm, talking with the people of the farm, 
to be at the same page what's the normal body condition, what's the fat body condition, what's the thin body condition. Uh, also important is about uh, calibration of the feed box that would be to check how much is set in the feed box and how much is really dropping. That's very important. We can see difference that even on different brands, for example, in one brand of feed box, you can put five pounds and it will drop four and a half. And the other brand, you can put the, five, the same five pounds and you drop five and a half pounds. So it's important to consider the brand the farm is using and also the alignment of that. For example, in this farm, two feed box, same brand, same feed, same farm. Both feed box are set to drop five pounds, but one feed box is dropped one pound more than the other, just because the alignment of that. So it's another thing that's important to consider in the feeding management, in the body condition management. About the feed intake in lactation, okay? Now changing to lactation. Uh, the sow's vo voluntary feed intake in lactation is frequently inadequate to meet nutrient demands. So usually the sows will eat less than they would need to eat in lactation. And it's harder, even harder for the parity ones because they're, they are still growing. So we have this challenge. And also the temperature plays a role in the feed intake lactation, so we should control that very well. It's important to train the guilds preferring so they can learn how to eat in the self-feeders before fairing, okay? Stand up the cells no less than twice a day to stimulate them to eat more, okay? Is access to fresh water a big component of the milk is the water. So the cells need to uh, drink water to produce milk. So this is very important. And to have the right curve, the right room temperature, uh, to have the right feed intake for the cells in the lactation room. It's very important to have daily adjustment in the feeders. Uh, we would not like to have too much feed in the feeders so to not have the risk of the feed getting old, getting spoiled, and also wastage of feed. But we would not like to have a small quantity of feed in the feeder, so we, can, we would limit the feed intake of the sow. Uh, when we work with full feed in the different phases, the challenge, a big challenge, will be the spoiled feed, so cleaning if the feed is getting old, that's very important and that, that should be done daily and individually. And also follow up on individual feed intake, even if the lactation barn as a whole is eating very well, uh, the farm will still have some sows at lactation not eating well, some outliers, and the farm needs to be very proactive to identify them and have the right actions to fix that, what's happening. About the, so let's talk now about the boar exposure is also very important for the management of the winded sows. So the removal of the suckling piglets of the sow will stimulate the sow to start again the cycle that in few days she will show heat again. And the presence of the boar will accelerate that process. So that's why it's important. The target is to have more than 92% of the sows bred by day seven. So it will depend, of course, at the weather, at the conditions at the farm, but we would like to have a target than more than 92% of the sows bred by day seven. <laughs> If possible, at weaning, to group the parity ones together so the farm can have a special attention to those as they are a special group at the farm also. It is important to start the boar exposure since the day the sows were weaned, okay? And we need to use good boars in the right quantity at the farm, okay? Well, let's say that a mature boar is ready after 12 months of age and when the farm is working with uh, mation crosses, this boar can be ready earlier. One thing that's very important is to mate a cow sow once in a week to keep their interest. So take the teaser boars and once in a week, or if not possible, once in a week, once in, on each two weeks to mate some cow sows so the boar will be better to work with the sows. 
more stimulated. This is a study showing, comparing uh, when the boar is placed close to the south when he's not working and comparing to when the, the, the boar is placed close to the south all the time, okay? So it shows that when the farm placed the boars far from the south when not doing the boar exposure, the south tend to show uh, heat earlier, okay? So in this study, they found, have found around half a day that the south will show heat earlier when the boar is not, not placed close to the south when not working. And now let's talk about the feed intake during the winter surface interval is very important also. Uh, sometimes we arrive at some farms and people at the farm are not that confident that a, win a winnet sow can eat, can eat a lot of feed, but they really can eat. And this is even more important for the modern sows that will be winning 12 piglets, 13 piglets. Okay. So we would think about the feed intake in the winter source interval as it will recover faster if a sow lost some body condition in lactation. And also, we will shorter the winter service interval, the feed intake in the winter service interval. So, the last year we did a, a, a study to check how much a winnet sow could eat in the winter service interval. So, this is pounds per day and day zero to day five. And we could find that in this study that the sows ate as average 10, around 10 and a half pounds per day in that period. And after we did this study, we got deeper in another study comparing sows with full feed in the winter service interval compared to sows with limited feed, okay? So the sows with full feed, they ate around nine and a half pounds per day. And the sows with limited feed, they ate around six pounds per, per day. And what we have found we have found that the sows with full feed in the winter source interval in this study, they showed heat one day earlier than the sows with limited feed, okay? And the sows that had full feed in the winter source interval, in the next fairing, they had one extra piglet boar, okay? And another thing that is important here is about the cost. Okay, the farm will have a higher cost, with feed in the winter source interval, but the extra piglet, the, the sow will have, will pay that cost. So it's not really a cost, we can see that like an investment, okay? And we got deeper in this study to check what happens with the parity ones and the parity twos <laughs> and the next fairing of those, okay? So we compared uh, parity ones and parity twos uh, on full feed compared to limited feed, and we could figure out one, one and a half day earlier showing heat for the, the peri ones and peri twos who had the full feed, and also around one piglet and a half more for those P2s and P3s that had the previous winter source interval in full feed. So the biggest effect is even realized in the P2s and P3s, the fairing of those, it's important that each sow needs to be treated as an individual. Even when the winter service interval, the average of the farm is having 10 pounds, we will have sows eating 12, 11, maybe 13. So it's very important to give the 12 pounds for those sows, 13 pounds if she can eat to those sows, so we should treat them as an individual. And it's very important to do that daily. So at some time of the day, you check the feeders. How is that? If there's too much feed, if the sows are having limited feed, it's very important to do that every day. And the golden standard for that would be provide winnet sows, the full feed, individual crates, and if possible, nipple drinkers, because with that, the farm would uh, be able to put feed in the feeders 24 seven for the winnet sows. So as in lactation, feed the winnet sows no less than two times per day, but we need to think about the full feed. The ideal is to have uh, feed 24-7 to them. 
Also, here we have the challenge of the full feed, about the spoiled feed, the old feed. We need to remove that on the right time. Uh, if possible, uh, group the P1s, as I said, together at the winning row, so we can have a special attention to those. And do not place the colored cells in the winning row. We should not uh, spend the time and the money and the feed with the colored cells the, uh, that we would need to spend with the winded cells. So takeaways, uh, as I said in the beginning, is not only the, the wind to service interval that plays a role in the management of the wind, winded cells. As we talked about the gestation, the body condition management on that will play a role in the wind to service interval. The full feed from fairing to breeding, that would be the full feed in lactation to not let the sow uh, lose body condition in the lactation. And also the full feed in the winter surface interval to recover the body condition if the sow lost body condition in the previous lactation. We should have good bores at the farm at the right quantity to not let the bores get tired. Okay. If possible, to group the P1s together in the winning row to have a special attention to them. As we saw, they are the group that are having the biggest effect in the feed intake on those. And here is important to think also, in the feeding, in the winter service interval, even if the farm is having a higher cost with feed, the extra piglets the, the sow will have in the next fairing can pay that feed, so we should see that as an investment and not only as a cost for that.